I mean, I'm a, I'm a bloke from Leicester, right? Um, and uh, you know, I do what I do. But if I can do that and take the official story absolutely apart in every aspect, where the hell have the BBC and CNN been in the last 18 years? Where have they been? Why is it that, uh, and I travel the world a lot, mm -hmm. why have I never ever anywhere in the world seen one mainstream media documentary mm -hmm. questioning the official story? Well, you, I, I wouldn't say predicted this, but you, you made claims, I think, in the early 2000s, uh, before this happened, maybe late 90s, I think it was 98, that a terror attack in a major US city would happen in order to... To, to push it on. Yeah. The, 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 it's the te basically, 9-11 is a extreme example of a technique that I've been calling since the 1990s, um, problem, reaction, solution. Uh, it's a technique that's used on us all the time. You want to change the world in a certain way and you want to push the world in a certain direction. You want to do certain things, which you know, if you just openly announce this is what we're going to do or we want to do, you'll get a pushback. People will go, what do you mean? What are we going to do that for? Well, what's the justification of that? Like regime change in a series of countries in the Middle East and invading Afghanistan, etc. Well, nobody, nobody ever wants to go to war. And I think there was a quote wasn't Bush, it was one of his people who goes something like a new Pearl Harbor. There was a quote yeah. that went around where we need a new Pearl yeah, Harbor. Yeah, yeah. I, I can give you chapter and verse on that. Yeah. And, and that alone is devastating to uh, the official story. But, um, you know, if you, um, if you look at um, that whole area of the, um, the new Pearl Harbor, there's a sequence that you can pick up very clearly which I'll get to in a second. But just to finish the thing on uh, problem, reaction, solution, you first of all, instead of just openly announcing it, and you know you're going to get pushback, you don't do that. You create a problem. It could be a terrorist attack. It could be a war. It could be a run on a currency. It could be a government collapse. Anything that will give you the opportunity to give the solution to the problem you're creating. Crucially, you, um, you name another villain as soon as you can. And bin Laden and Afghanistan were being named literally within an hour. That, that was amazing. Of, of, Looking back at of it, it, how quick how they quick. had been. It's like, well, if you knew this guy was such a fucking problem, yeah. why is he fucking able to do this sort yeah. of stuff? Um, and even, even Alex Jones, and I know Alex Jones is not like the bloke to be quoting because his name is not worth much at the moment, but he, there was footage of him going... The, he, he named Twin Towers. He said, you know, when surprises is attacked and we know you're going to use Bin Laden as the boogeyman. Yeah. Like he, he called a lot of that. Yeah, effect. absolutely. And, um, you know, it's an amazing thing that um, Bin Laden and Afghanistan were named by a guy called Ehud Barak, mm -hmm. a former Israeli prime minister. He actually had been Israeli prime minister up until early uh, 2001. On the BBC immediately after the attacks, he's naming bin Laden and he's, he's, he's basically calling for an invasion of Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, these, um, these things are all planned because you create the problem and you blame someone else for it. And you, you've got to get your villain in early so, so that villain then becomes the, the official story. It dominates who did it. And you're looking at stage two of problem, reaction, solution with a, a reaction from the public, what you want them in, fear, outrage, and you want them to basically say, do something, this can't go on, what they're gonna do about it. And then you, who've covertly created the problem and got that reaction, then openly offer the solutions to the problems you've created. And if we go to what you mentioned there about a new Pearl Harbor, here's a sequence. Um, in 1979, the so-called father of Israeli intelligence, a man called Issa Harel, told an American journalist that um, he felt that uh, the Arab, Arab terrorists were going to target the biggest building in New York because um, it was a phallic symbol and that would, in psychological terms, help to break the spirit of America. In the same year of 1979, Benjamin Netanyahu um, started having conferences, one in 79, one in 1984, uh, which American officials and Father George Bush attended, in which he was calling for a war on terror and calling for the removal of Saddam Hussein um, in 
Iraq. In 1996, um, uh, uh, a man called uh, Richard Pearl, who was an ultra-Zionist close associate of Netanyahu, who was by then Prime Minister of Israel, he produced a report uh, called A Clean Break uh, for Netanyahu, in which he called for the removal of Saddam Hussein, targeting Syria, uh, targeting Iran, uh, and so on. And then in 1997, um, an organization with Richard Pearl involved heavily uh, was created in America called the Project for the New American Century. This was an ultra-Zionist organization which um, was co-founded by two big-time Israel firsters and associates of, of Netanyahu called uh, William Crystal and Robert Kagan. In the Project for the New American Century in 1997, when it was formed and right up and across 9-11, was Dick Cheney, who at the time of 9-11 would be de facto president, officially vice president, mm -hmm. Donald Rumsfeld, who would be 9-11 Defense Secretary, uh, Paul Wolfowitz, who was 9-11 uh, Deputy Defense Secretary and the real power in the Pentagon, um, and uh, Dov Zakheim, who at the time of 9-11 was Comptroller of the Pentagon in, in, in uh, charge of that entire budget. And there was another guy there in the project for the American Century called John Bolton, uh, who has been until he got, uh, got uh, um, thrown out this very week as we speak, uh, was, was pushing uh, Trump into um, uh, targeting countries that this project for the American century uh, wanted targeting. So come back into the sequence to 1998, when this organization wrote to President Bill Clinton calling for an invasion of Iraq to remove Saddam Hussein. You see what these people wanted, right? Come forward again to September 2000, one year before 9-11. The Project for the New American Century produced a report calling for, and it was a, basically a mirror of the Clean Break report. And um, it was written by these characters I've just been talking about, including this Richard Pearl who'd done the, the Clean Break for Netanyahu. And it called for American forces to fight and decisively win multiple theatre wars to regime change in a series of countries. Iraq, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, North Korea, and others. And in this document, it says, this process of transformation, these regime changes, mm -hmm. will necessarily be slow. And this is the quote, absent some catalyzing and catastrophic event like a new Pearl Harbor. That's where I heard it. Yeah. Right. And um, a few <clears throat> months later, a very few months later, the people that wrote that document, your Zakheims and your Cheneys and your Rumsfelds and your Wolfowitz and your Pearls, came to power in January 2001 with the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. And um, nine months later, America had what Bush called at the time our Pearl Harbor, the Pearl Harbor of the 21st century, as a result of which, ever since, they've been ticking off this list. This, well, this Iraq list. didn't make no sense because uh, officially uh, they weren't even involved in 9-11 no, anyway. And the no. weapons of mass destruction were obviously proved to be a load of bollocks. Yeah. Um, just to put it into context, though, for maybe some younger people who've never been exposed to your work before, the idea to allow this to happen to their own people is unbelievable or hard to get their heads around or, but this isn't this has been happening many times to my to my, what i've researched anyway I, I think hitler was it the reichstag building yeah reichstag building yeah yeah and then um actually some people actually say that americans knew about pearl harbor before it happened oh absolutely they did i've, I've gone into that in um, in previous books and some people um uh have written whole Books about mm. Pearl Harbor alone. America was was itching to get into the war, yeah. uh, from a government standpoint. But the people were like, "No, keep us the fuck yeah. out." Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you very, very, very quickly the background to that. Um, Franklin Roosevelt won an election um, before America entered the Second World War, and his mantra was, "I tell you, mothers and fathers of America, your boys are not going into that war in Europe." Mm -hmm. He knows they are. Mm -hmm. Um, but he can't win by saying so. But he knows they are. Yeah. 
So um, what they look for, and this is how problem reaction solution works, they create an excuse which gives them the excuse to do what they wanted to do anyway, but also puts them in the clear. Because after the Pearl Harbor attack yeah. by Japan, um, which was very clearly um, engineered, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was like, well, uh, you, you know I didn't want to go in that war in Europe, but we can't have this. Yeah. And, uh, and people going, yeah, well, I, I understand that, Franklin. Yeah, we've got to go. Yeah, problem, reaction, solution. That's so how from, it works. From that standpoint, if we're looking at 9-11, after all the research you've done, and maybe we could do the Pentagon first, because there, there's a lot wrong with that as well. Uh, where's the footage? They had 80-odd cameras there. 80, 84, where, 85 cameras. Where's the remains of the plane as well? Yeah. Because if I'm right, thinking half of the plane just didn't even show up. Well, let me, let me just explain this. Um, you know, there is a question over mm. um, a massive question, I say absolutely justified, about whether a plane hit the Pentagon at all, mm. uh, for, for many of the reasons you, you've already mentioned, plus a lot more. And, um, and, and the official reaction is, well, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. That's a conspiracy theory. Well, OK, there were 84 cameras in and around the Pentagon uh, filming that day, which I, I know and I saw in the book, the FBI came and took away that morning, um, which we've never seen. If a plane hit the Pentagon, many of those cameras are going to have it on. So mm. just show them. But they, ne they never, they never uh, uh, have. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing is this. Do you know it's never been established? Isn't there a photograph or two photographs with Oh, yeah, about five frames. Flash. Oh, yeah, it's a joke. And, and you're like... That doesn't look like a far, plane. far distant. Yeah, it looks more like a missile. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. there's a very good chance it was a missile, mm. it, either a missile or a bomb inside the building. Mm. Because, uh, well, God, I mean, we could talk forever about this. There's so many elements to <laughs> Sorry. it. You know the size of the Pentagon, right? Massive, massive building. Well, um, on the far side from where the Pentagon was said to be hit, that's where all the bigwigs were. Your Rumsfelds and your your big generals, right? Now, if you're a uh, and by the way, if the plane had to come straight in, that's where it would have hit. Mm. But it had to do this spiral. And, and by doing the spiral and missing where the bigwigs were, yeah. and if you did any research on the internet, you knew where they were. No, the guy flying, it's like, no, nah, yeah. John, it has, I know, let's, that hit the, yeah, I know, let's, like, let's hit the cleaners room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to need to do another circle, mate. You're going to hit the Rumsfelds. <laughs> We've got to turn yeah, this around again. It's a, I'm, yeah, having a, I'm, mate, I'm having a mare here. Yeah. It comes around. Wait, wait for this. It comes around, they say, and it hits something called Wedge One. Wedge one just happened to be that part of the Pentagon that had just undergone massive reinforcement to protect the building from just such an wow. attack. Wow. It's just insane. But like I was saying, um, do you know that they've never even established, and it's a doddle to do, that the planes that left the airports were the ones that hit the buildings? 